Great. So I would um, like to begin uh, and just introduce myself. I'm Tony Guillomo, Director of Art Education at the Lowell Milken Family Foundation. And I want to thank you for your interest in Artifact and for showing up for this session. I'm joined today by my colleague, Sarah Hoffrecht. Director of Programs and Partnerships, and Michael Kay, Communications and Digital Media Editor. Sarah and Michael, would you like to say a quick hello? Hi, everyone. Um, I am going to be running this presentation. So if you don't see me, you're um, watching the PowerPoint screen that's coming from my computer. If there's any technical difficulties, you can reach out to me or to Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Hi, I'm Michael. Um, I am also on the technical side of things here, um, letting people in. And you'll see a message for me uh, throughout this presentation of if you have questions for the Q&A, you can send them to me privately. Um, but I'll also be posting links to various parts of our website. Thank you. I'm delighted too that um, we have some staff from the Lowell Milken Center for Unsung Heroes in Fort Scott, Kansas, joining us. Um, Karen Wilterding, who is online communications director, is on the call. Um, Karen, would you like to say a quick hello? You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Got it. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Um, I'm just very happy to see such a large crowd today. Thank you all for coming and joining us. Um, Norm is having a little bit of technical difficulty right now. His link was not working, but we are getting that corrected. Great. Thank you. Well, hopefully Norm can join. Norm Connard Con is executive director of the Lowell Milken Center in Fort Scott, Kansas. So um, we thank you everyone for posting in the chat um, and for uh, letting us know where you're calling from. We'd like to begin with just a little bit more, uh, getting a little better sense of who's in this group um, and delighted to see so many of you uh, on the call. Uh, we have a poll just to um, gather a little more information about who's in the group. So Michael is going to put up the poll. Uh, right now, and these are just three quick questions, if you wouldn't mind um, answering those quickly. Okay, just another 30 seconds or so. Okay. 85% rate. I think that's pretty good. Michael, do you want to end the poll? And uh, share the results? Okay, great. So let's see, we have got um, a large group of art educators uh, on our call today, 60%. Thank you for joining. Um, and then we are followed closely behind by um, students, so excited that you're here. Um, and then let's see, we have our second question. I'm new to Artifact. Yes, okay, 83%. Well, this is exciting. We're delighted to be able to tell you about the program today. And thank you to our uh, seven people who have been returning. Um, and then uh, let's see, okay, whopping 73% of of you are planning to participate in the 2023 competition. This is excellent, we're delighted. Um, and then um, uh, some of you are no, but I know that you're other or administrators. And then we have about five people that are unsure, but we will, um, we will get you there to the end of the program. So uh, thank you, Michael, if you wanna stop sharing those results now and we will begin. I wanted to uh, just give you an introduction of what we're gonna cover in the next hour or so. Um, we are going to talk about uh, an overview of Artifact, 
and then we'll talk specifically about the 2023 competition. Um, and then we have some guests joining us that are um, previous award-winning students and teachers that have participated in Artifact. And then we will have time for your uh, open Q&A at the end of our program. If at any time you have a question that comes to mind as we're going through the program, uh, we invite you to just go ahead and post those in the chat. Michael is going to be gathering those questions and then we will be um, responding to them at the Q&A. So go ahead and post them if they come up as we go through the program. Great, thank you. So I'd like to begin by introducing Artifact and my, why you might want to participate in this program. And um, that really begins with the unsung heroes. So the unsung heroes are individuals who took extraordinary actions that improved the lives of others or benefited society and that had a profound and positive impact on the course of history. But unsung heroes are largely unrecognized by society for their contributions. And so Artifact in its biggest sense is an opportunity for you and your students to tell these stories through participating in the program. And that's what the program invites you to do. So this program grows out of the mission of the Lowell Milken Center for Unsung Heroes, which delivers project-based learning opportunities for teachers and students to develop these stories. The mission is centered on the founder's vision that one individual can make a pro profound and positive difference in the lives of others. Through Artifact, students discover the unsung heroes as role models who have demonstrated exceptional character traits and additionally students are encouraged through the lesson plan to explore how they can have an impact and create positive art or a positive art effect by creatively interpreting celebrating and sharing these stories in their artworks and in an accompanying um, impact statement so, Michael, if you would post the, um, Sarah, if you can just go back for a second on the slides. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. And Michael, if you could post the um, lesson plan link, um, we'll share that with you now in the chat. And um, we're going to be sharing some links, but you can find all of these resources on the Lowell Milken uh, Center for Unsung Heroes website as well. So I mentioned that the unsung heroes can be explored as positive role models, and here you can see some of the character traits and positive actions that thematically thread through these stories. Um, students may pick up on one to two of these that most resonate with them as they choose how to visually tell the story um, in their artworks and in their accompanying uh, impact statements. And um, Michael, we also have a link to the impact statement and outline of that that you can find on the website, but Michael is going to give you a quick link for that as well. So in this slide, um, we can see uh, some of the unsung heroes. There are 90 approved unsung heroes on the Lowell Milken Center website that students can choose from. And these stories cut across uh, the domains of STEAM topics, science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, as well as civil rights, social justice, wartime heroes, um, environmental science, and education. And uh, as I mentioned, there's an approved list. So Michael will give you the quick link to the approved list. Um, but when you click through, you can find a bio and a profile of each of each hero and uh, their unique contribution to history. And I want to mention over 3 million students from around the globe have reached, um, have been reached through the stories of the uh, um, unsung heroes uh, through, Low Milk, through the Low Milken Center. All right, so we are, um, you have a flash preview of the slides. On the next slide, we're going to talk about specifically the competition. And so this goes into this segment where I wanted to really focus on what's coming up. So the um, Artifact competition uh, first began giving awards in 2016, and it's open to middle and high school students. And um, this is a global international program. It invites uh, visual artworks in 2D and 3D media. Oops, and I think we lost our slides for a second. There we are. There we are. Okay, uh, one one back, Sarah. There we perfect. Okay, great. So um, 
invites uh, various 2D and 3D media. As I mentioned, um, you want to choose the story of an approved unsung hero that's um, already listed on the website. There is an accompanying impact statement that's about um, 500 to 1,000 words. Um, and the impact statement um, really explores um, you know, the impact that you want to make through the art and how you will share that project out. There is a judging panel um, that um, invites experts from the field to um, view the submissions and score those according to a rubric. So the rubric is also posted on the website. Um, I think Michael has a quick link to that. Um, and invite you to take a look at that rubric. Um, it weighs on creative interpretation, as well as the aesthetic value, and as well as the impact statement. And in 2023, there's a new category for spotlight unsung heroes. These are about six unsung heroes that are in this category for a new spotlight prize. Um, you can see them listed on the main competition page, um, on the competition overview page. And, um, and then the key dates. So uh, submissions are um, need to be submitted by April 1st. The finalists will be announced April 15th, um, and then we will be announcing the winners uh, in mid-May sometime, in about mid-May. So, so that's kind of an overview. In this next slide, I'd like to uh, talk about the um, award opportunities and the recognition. So Artifact offers students the opportunity to win awards and gain recognition. These are the awards that are listed for 2020. The awards here are what is listed for 2023. And I wanted to mention that there's also additional awards um, that may be given at the discretion of the judging panel, including certificates of excellence. All students, teachers, and schools that are finalists and winners um, are recognized on the Lomokin Center website. And um, I also want to highlight that Artifact is an initiative that is growing in the direction of supporting art teachers in terms of recognition, advocacy, and professional development offerings. So for the teachers out there, we invite you to also please stay connected with us um, as the year unfolds uh, to learn more about those opportunities that are coming up. And on the next slide, we have just a quick recap of how to participate. So. Um, First step is to choose your unsung hero from that approved list. Um, the second is to review the materials and the resources so that you can um, really understand the context of uh, your artwork. So review the, the um, rules on the website, the lesson plan, uh, the scoring rubric, and the impact statement outline. And then gather your materials um, and submit everything, uh, your images of your artworks, um, the application, and the written impact statement through the online uh, portal by April 1st. And here is the quick link to the competition there. So you'll find all of that material and everything that I was just going through uh, through the website. So now I'd like to turn the program over um, to Sarah and, uh, and we're going to hear from uh, some award-winning teachers and students who have previously participated. Great. Thank you so much, Tony, for going through all of that important information about the overall competition and the 2023 um, cycle for the full group. Um, now we get the privilege of hearing from teachers and students who have participated in the past so they can share their experiences and provide some insight into um, participating in this year's competition. Um, so we're going to introduce first our two special guest teachers. Um, we have uh, Cheryl Lunger and um, Laura Durr participating. And um, these, I'm just using these two slides to um, show examples of uh, award-winning artwork that students produced that worked with both of these two wonderful teachers. Um, we have some samples, and these are really just samples of um, not only award-winning work that has um, received accolades in 
um, competitions, but these are just um, a couple examples out of many others that have been submitted and have been finalists and awardees. So for example, um, Cheryl Lunger's student um, in 2020, won a junior division certificate of excellence for um, Alexander Onyenik for his portrayal of um, heroic actions by Cheyenne Webb. And um, in the 2022 competition, we had a student, Eve Wilson, who will also be joining us later, um, win the Middle School Best in Show Award for her work, her 3D work celebrating the um, founder of algebra, Muhammad Ibn Mul Arquazimi. And then we also have Laura Durr, who is an art instructor at Hopewell Valley Central High School in Hopewell, New Jersey. And these are some selections from artworks that have received awards in our competition, among others that have also received awards. Um, this first one on the left is a $1,000 Senior Division Certificate of Excellence in 2020 um, by Serafina Gilman, celebrating Civil um, War unsung hero Cheyenne Webb. This one in the center is a Senior Division Certificate of Excellence celebrating the Candy Bomber, Colonel Gail S. Halverson, who is a wartime unsung hero. And then on the far right, we have a 2022 outstanding high school submission um, celebrating the work of Lewis Hine um, from the 2022 competition. So um, first off, I wanted to um, have Laura and Cheryl unmute themselves for the audience. And um, I thought that perhaps we'd start with Cheryl here talking about her experience working with her entire class who does a project every year where all of the students prepare for the, um, for the annual competition. And after that, um, Laura, I would love to hear you speak about the individual relationships that you've built um, through the competition with the students that you've been mentoring. So Cheryl, take it away. So, um... Good evening, everybody. As you can see, it's dark here in Florida. <laughs> my my lighting is not great, but I hope you can see me. Um, so we are just starting Lowell Milken right now, actually, in my class. Uh, I have a design class that I we we have for seventh grade level. We have design, drawing, and uh, and sculpture for that group. And so the design is a perfect fit for this because it gives you this opportunity to bring in whatever kinds of communication media they want to use. And that's what I try to really emphasize. I notice Eve is here. Hi, Eve. And uh, she, did a, she did a submission as a seventh grader for uh, Jerry Cobb, and it got recognized. It get, I think it got a finalist position in, in Lowell Milken, but we sent it on to, uh, we sent it actually on to Scholastic because it was eligible and it got a national silver key. So uh, it's really, it really, this contest probably better than most allows kids to really sort of stretch their thinking outside of themselves. Scholastic, I think in a lot of ways, wants them to be more introspective and, and emote themselves in their work. This opportunity is figure out how to take someone else and really show them in a way that other people can really appreciate that person. And that's a different kind of skill set, actually. Um, we started this year, I didn't do this with Eve's group, but I get a little better at it every year. So we're starting right now with uh, them figuring out the difference between a, a narrative kind of, uh, you know, like very natural kind of representation for somebody versus one that is non-representational. And we're using actually the Vietnam Memorial as an example of something that emotes the kind of 
emotion that you want to give someone in recognizing them that is completely non-representational to the people. I mean, you see their names, of course, and you guys don't look like you're old enough, but I am to remember the controversy of that particular uh, monument and that wedge that now we look at and we're so impressed with, and they're all over the place, including we've got one here in Jacksonville. I think they're in a lot of different cities. That was really not, that was very criticized when it first came out. It's kind of like that new Martin Luther King sculpture. I'm not wondering in 20 years what people will think of that because the, that was not what a lot of people wanted. And I will give whoever it is that thinks up monuments for uh, Washington, D.C., they, they had to have a lot of backbone because there was so much pushback to do the traditional kind of, you know, the Iwo Jima style sculpture. And they do have one of those as a compromise. They put up three Marines. If you've been there, you know there's a bronze Marine statue. And yet the Vietnam Memorial has become the most visited of any of the memorials there. And, um, you know, certainly the kinds of emotions people have there is a whole different thing than it is when you look at something that looks like a human being. Eve did well with hers because there was no representation of that guy, <laughs> you know, so she had to find a way not to just put him on the work. Um, I'm having my students right now, another very strong monument in uh, Washington that's newer is the Korean War monument. And it's almost, it's conversely a narrative monument that really does bring out the same kind of emotion. So we start kind of with an understanding of what is our end goal and who you pick, how do you get people to feel some kind of connection to that person? And um, it is an easy form and they're not all successful at it. Quite a few of them just get stymied by it, but they work at it and, and you know what, it teaches them something, whether they're, they're successful or not. If they put in the, the, you know, legwork and everything, they, they get something from this. And then as I always tell my students, you know, money's good. <laughs> so the idea you can win it, there's nothing wrong with that. We all work for a salary, I'm pretty sure. And so teaching them that, you know, it's not this, you don't always have to just do it for your, from your heart. You can do it and get paid. There's really nothing wrong with that. So that I think this contest is the only one I think that offers such a lucrative, uh, unconnected monetary prize because they don't have to spend this prize going to college. They can, they get to spend it on what they want. And I, I think that's good for them. Actually, we need to teach them to make those decisions too. So I think this contest does all of that. And I, I, we, I've been participating for about, well, since you guys went to Dallas, were you in Dallas, Sarah? Was that, did you take that to Dallas? No, we're going to be in San Antonio um, later this month for the National Art Education Association Conference. And if there are educators on this Zoom that are going to be there in San Antonio, please come and visit our um, our booth because we'll have lots of exciting things to present there. And I just wanted to say a quick thank you, Cheryl, because you've touched on so many important aspects of our, the artifact in that there are so many different ways to tell these stories that are not simply a portrait, um, that there are ways to interpret like what um, professional artists do with a, a monument to honor these incredible lives and heroic acts. And that each student has the opportunity to explore how to tell that story in a way that is unique. And that um, you can direct students and they can use their own mind and heart to, to make those decisions through the, through the process of discovery. Um, so thank you again for, for sharing all of that with us. I'd like to mention one other thing to you educators who haven't done this. If you do plan to turn it into a project, number one, it's a long-term project. But number two, the way to avoid some traps, what I do is I have the kids each go through the list, pick three, <laughs> and know they're going to get one that no one else has. That avoids them can 
kind of competing with themselves, with each other, I mean, and thinking completely independently because, you know, we all look at someone's great idea and then we want to steal part of it. I mean, we just do. So, I mean, I'm looking at Laura's background, Laura Durr's background here, where you can see artwork that her students um, generated through this competition for completely, you know, different unsung heroes. And, you know, thinking about all of the artwork that your students have produced, Laura, they have all been on different heroes. You know, it's not as if they're, they're working on the same project. I would love to hear about your process, if it's similar to Cheryl, or if it's very different and how you've approached working with Art Artifact. Um, hi, everybody. So like Cheryl, we are also about a week into this, maybe a little less. Um, so this is all happening. Great timing. Um, we so little background. I, I teach high school art. Um, I teach the advanced courses and up to AP. I like to do this project with my juniors um, towards the end of the year, which also works out for the timing of the contest. But um, because it's a great opportunity to sort of make that connection between research and art making, um, which my way of encouraging and uh, guiding through the AP process is that the students should be really treating it like it's a research project, that their evidence is their artwork. Um, so my first steps, um, go through the list and encourage them not to look at the page of um, finalists and award winners. And I don't show them student examples from past years. Sometimes they know because they know things. Um, <laughs> But um, I definitely try to keep it just about gathering content first um, and finding somebody or something uh, or a creature. Um, we have a few people this year that are consumed with the pigeon and the dog at the moment, but um, that's fine. They're heroes too. Um, but try to find something that they can personally connect to. And um, when they make their, I, I have them make a declaration. The first assignment is, and I call it their declaration of who they're going to choose and why, um, which gets them really started thinking about, you know, what is it that's important about this person? What am I attracted to about this person? Um, from there, they do research. Yes, they choose from the list and they're, you know, all that information is available to them, but I encourage them to go further and to do more research and then to also do the visual research. So, um, you know, this hero was involved in, we'll take the candy bomber for instance, um, you know, do you need images of planes? Do you need images of candy? Do you need images of crowds? What kind of visual, visual data and information do you need to be able to create your work? Um, you know, in years past, they've done narrative uh, pieces that I think help to support their work in this because they've already explored how narrative art kind of come, can come together. Um, and we talk a lot throughout the whole process about the composition of the work um, and their material choices. Uh, the examples behind you, behind me, that's me, that's me there. Sorry. <laughs> It's been a long week. It's only Wednesday. Um, the example is behind me and I'm going to move my head. Um, our candy bomber student who uh, received recognition hated bubble gum and yet uh, made this three-dimensional sculpture in, a, we're traditionally a 2D set of courses, uh, made this sculpture and used actual, like a whole bucket of bazooka bubble gun and a heat gun to build her creation. Um, the one that way, the Cheyenne Webb piece, um, was acrylic paint during the heat of the 2020 pandemic. And uh, Serafina still managed to pull this off and um, do an amazing job. And then Raylan's piece is uh, really mixed media. Uh, so the photographic images um, are individual charcoal drawings on individual sheets of paper uh, added to uh, I believe it was an oil painting that she did. So, you know, it's it's been really interesting to see the kids, who they're interested in and why they're interested in the person. Um, and I, I sometimes sort of encourage them not to pick the same person, but occasionally they do. Um, and 
I, I I agree. I don't like when they want to pull from each other, but I think it sometimes can be helpful because by the time they're juniors with me, they usually sort of have their own style. And even if they are sort of uh, sharing ideas, they come out very differently. So Thank you so much, Laura, for sharing about all of your students and the work that you've done. You know, something that you touched upon was the idea that so many um, students will resonate with a different unsung hero. And we've tried to, you know, share all of the different unsung heroes on the uh, the approved list that um, Michael posted in the chat a while ago. And we're also, um, we, we also have wanted to think kind of beyond all of the different submissions that we've received over the years to celebrate some of the heroes that, you know, might be at the bottom of the list because people start reading that, that list and get, you know, interested in ones that might be at the top and don't get down to the very bottom and that there are so many unsung heroes who have incredibly valuable stories that can be celebrated. Um, what was interesting this year it was the first year that my students have asked well, should we try and pick one? Because like Cheryl said, they they do, they don't, I don't make them submit. If they want to submit, they submit. If they don't, I'll sometimes encourage them and other times, okay, fine. But um, they, this year wanted to know, should we try and pick one that hasn't been done? And I was thinking, well, I'm pretty sure probably most of them have been done at this point, but they were, you know, the one that hasn't won yet. Do you think we should, <laughs> they were gaming it. And I said, I don't know. I think you should choose one that matters to you because it's going to be a long project and it'll be a lot easier if you care. That's very good adv advice. I also think that that both, you know, both are our options for students, especially considering our new award category for our spotlight prize to highlight some of these wonderful heroes and um, and think about inspiring students to read more about um, the lives of unsung heroes that we haven't seen celebrated yet. But of course, it all comes down to which unsung hero inspires the student to generate their, um, you know, their most creative ideas for the competition. So um, I'm so thrilled that your students are trying to think, you know, about other, um, other unsung heroes to celebrate this year. And we're really, really excited to see what happens as a result of the Spotlight Prize competition. Um, we're going to be having a Q&A um, to all the teachers and students um, at the end of our Zoom, but right now I'm going to give our award-winning students an uh, opportunity to share a little bit about their experience. I'm going to share my screen really briefly here um, by way of introduction, and um, you'll get an opportunity to um, see the work that these students have produced. Some of it you've actually seen already, um, but you're going to be hearing from two students that have won awards. Um, you're going to be hearing from Chloe Kim, who's painting her, her digital work celebrating unsung hero Irina Sendler won the grand prize in the 2020 competition. And you'll also be hearing from Eve Wilson whose um, work I already mentioned because she's Cheryl's student, um, received the best in show for a middle, middle, middle school student, excuse me. Um, so we're gonna be um, hearing about some of their experiences. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I, um, I would love to start with Chloe and have Chloe introduce herself, talk a little bit about where she is now and um, I would love, Chloe, for you to kind of hear or, or to tell us a little bit about how you selected Irina Sendler and what your process was for creating this beautiful um, portrait about her. All right. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. It's kind of loud. I'm kind of in a public space because I do some rock climbing outside of school, so I'm at practice, but... Um, might be a little loud, but I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, well, I'm Chloe Kim. I'm a junior now, but um, I was in 10th grade when I first drew the portrait. And um, 
I picked Irina Sandler because she really stood out to me because during, I think I mentioned this in like some of the interview questions that I did for the website, but I um, picked her because it kind of connected to the curriculum of my history class that I was doing. So it was like really interesting for me to see like, because in history, we kind of do like a bigger like outward view on like the events that happen in history, but um, like the Holocaust and stuff. And this one kind of gave me like a really specific story and how one person changed a lot of things. And so I was really inspired by her quote. Um, I think I have it written down. Let me check it real quick. Um, oh, It was, okay. Okay, I can't find it right now because there's a lot, but it was about like, if you see somebody else drowning, um, you should also like, would you like jump in even if you don't know how to swim? And that really resonated with me. And I wanted to capture that in my artwork. So I think that just kind of sparked an idea in my head and I really liked that idea. And so I like went for it with her. And I think it turned out really good. And I really love the final product. But yeah. Thank you so much, Chloe. I, I, I always remember seeing that visual interpretation of that quote being something that we had not seen before, even though Irina Sendler is the one of the original unsung heroes that launched the Lowell Milken Center into to being. Um, but thinking about a visual representation of those words, I feel like it's a great example of thinking about how we're um, celebrating the story that might be, you know, non-visual and, and figuring out how to make it a visual treatment in this competition. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Eve Wilson. Um, Eve has submitted and won multiple awards um, and, and has been a finalist um, for her um, different projects, including the one that you've seen in the um, PowerPoint presentation. So I would love, Eve, if you could talk a little bit about how you select your um, your unsung hero, as well as how you conceive of these three-dimensional objects that you have created for this competition. Hi, I'm Eve. Um, I go to DA now, but when I went to La Villa, I did my eighth grade project for Lil Milken. And I, of course, went through the list and to how Miss Lunger had us assigned, but we did the thing where we had three people and I saw Muhammad and I love math. I love learning it. I love trying to explain it to others and things like that. So I, especially algebra. So that was even like a closer tie. Like I felt connected to him and he caught my eye and I looked more into it. And he's the one that I was like determined to like shine a light on and wanted to express what he did, who he was, his past and how he did what he did um, in a very interesting way that can teach others, but also be interesting at the same time. And of course, to talk about the process of it and how I like created it always got to start with thumbnails, which are, you know, little drawings. And it starts out with many, like a large range of ideas, like 2D and 3D. I don't know yet, like at that point, which I want to do. And I try to range, they may be similar, but then I might pick a few that I think are working with composition and like interesting, like, parts to it, something unique. I want something that you've never seen before. I don't, you know, and I move along with those, try to see if there's like alter, how I want to alter it to make it even better. I do maybe larger drawings to like get more detail. And then I start to really develop it. I might pick one, one or two. And I just keep like working with it until I think it like really works and represents who he was, well, for Muhammad. 
And of course, I want to think like something, I mean, I said it before, that's like eye catching and no one's ever seen before because you don't want to do something that's like been there, done that. And, but yeah, that's, sorry, that was a little, um, no, I yeah. think that's really helpful for students because, you know, one of the aspects that the judges consider when they're reviewing work is the uniqueness of the creative interpretation. And so I really encourage students that are on this call and interested in submitting this year to look at the artwork that has been submitted and that has won awards to see if that inspires you to think about a different way of approaching the work, which is something that seems like it's very important as part of your process, Eve. Yes, I, and it's a lot of thinking through things. And even if I start, I decide on a plan and it's like all planned out. I have drawings of how it will be built, what materials I'll need, how much of the materials I'll need, how long I might set some deadlines for myself. It's like, I want to like, depending on whether it's a 2D or 3D, which I ended up for Low Milk and doing 3D since I didn't see as many on low milk and website of the other finalists I wanted to like try to expand also that's why I use mixed media because then I can experiment with different materials and mediums and decide what works great for getting an idea like through an artwork to be represented but yeah <laughs> that's most of it and yeah, I was going to say something else, but I kind of forgot. So, yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Eve, for sharing your experiences. Um, I have, um, uh, I, I have uh, about um, 15 minutes or so that we have the opportunity for everyone that's a guest here to direct questions to myself, to anyone that's on staff from the Low Milken Center for Unsung Heroes and to our special guests. And you're welcome to type your question in the chat or turn your video on and raise your hand. And we can answer any questions that you might have about participating in the artifact. Sarah, can I say something for the good of the group? Absolutely. Um, one of the things, if you're interested in this contest, a great resource for your students are the Discovery Awards. I meant to say that earlier. Some of the student produced um, awards in the Discovery part of, of this, uh, well, it's a different contest, but they're kind of connected. They have done such a great in-depth study of these people that I always recommend to my kids go there, see what these kids have found. They've dug this stuff up and it's at your fingertips. And so, you know, a starting point is for them to get to know who these folks are. And that's a great start, actually. Some of those projects are just absolutely amazing. So just wanted to say that because I forgot to earlier. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that pro tip, Cheryl. Michael has um, posted the um, specific link to view the Discovery Award um, projects in the chat. I also have um, some questions that were privately messaged to me um, throughout this. And I think uh, since Eve was just talking about um, deciding on the, on the medium that was used, um, the question was, how did you decide? Well, I, I love working with all sorts of, like a range of media and it was hard for me to decide what I would like to use. And it was mostly thinking about what would work best to get my message to, to the viewers and how I'd want to express what I was trying to share. And for mine, it was for my project that I did most recently with Muhammad, I wanted to show like the past and of what he did and then who he was and then the future now. And I thought the best way to do that was through a 3D form. And it would be
be able to like, that's why there's like the three sections and it would be harder to do that to through a 2D media. But of course that would also be able to be done. I just decided to go more on the 3D route because I thought it would be more immersive and better or easier to understand maybe for some viewers of the artwork. Sorry, I, I just posted this uh, second question in the chat. Also, thank you, Eve. Some of my, I, I got a little confused here with my keyboard functions. Um, but someone would like to know if you can uh, submit to both the Discovery Award and the Unsung Hero Contest. And luckily I can answer that right here. Yes, you can. Um, I'm happy to um, add a little bit to that yeah. um, answer, which is that the Discovery Award and Artifact have different deadlines and timelines, and that's strategic so that we can have students participate if they are interested um, in both competitions. So um, absolutely feel free to, um, to start thinking about both competitions in the future. Great. Thank you, Sarah. We have more questions for the students, um, just two or three more. Um, so this might be more directed at Chloe because Chloe is coming to the end of the high school stint. Um, so the question is, are you planning on uh, pursuing art in college as a major in some way? I'm, I'm still kind of deciding on what I want to do because I have a lot of interest and I think that's been like something that I've been or we still our college counseling meetings with our college counselors this year and I've been talking with them about what I want to do so I I'm going to be honest I don't know yet but I do know that I want to keep doing art like in college even if that might not be my major yeah and if, if it's okay, I can chime in. Um, Serafina, who is that piece? Serafina is going to um, college for art education um, and fine arts. And actually, um, because of this and the rest of her portfolio, uh, got a full ride. Um, and our candy bomber um, got a huge scholarship to Carnegie Mellon and um, in the art department there uh, with a degree that is ending up being really interdisciplinary between arts and engineering. And my hope and dream is that Sophia becomes a um, Imagineer for Disney one day. Um, and Raylan's currently a senior and um, still in the process of figuring this all out, but looking into programs that are um, kind of like user experience type of um, things. So definitely creative energy in those programs, but not traditionally art. Thank you so much for sharing that, Laura. I, I think it's great that you can see that students are excited to think about art in a larger context as far as their careers, but that that's also something that can be part of their lives without getting a, a you know, a, a degree in college, um, that, that there are lots of paths to, to take. Tony um, also just posted in our chat the FAQs section, which also you can refer to at any point after this Zoom with some other of the more commonly asked questions about submitting your work to the competition. And one question that you won't find on there that we received is a question about how many um, artworks one student can submit to Artifact. What a great question. Um, our um, our submission portal allows for one piece of artwork per student per year. But perhaps we should add that into our FAQs. That's a really good question. We haven't gotten that before. Yeah, and there's um, just circling back uh, for the students, um, the award winners. Um, one person wants to know, uh, how long did it take for you to choose your hero? 
slash how many options did you sort through? And I know Eve, you talked about this a little bit already, right? Yeah, so I, well, I had a, since it was a school assignment, it was kind of at a deadline, but each night or class I would like look at through the list and I'd go through each of the people. And of course I was more drawn to a group like certain individuals and I would look into each of them a little bit. I might, I kind of remember like writing a little summary about each just to go through. And I would, even after class, like when I go home, I would look into it and that would, that took a few days because I didn't want to, you know, jump right into some person and like pick them right away because I wanted to give myself options and time to think about what would work best for me and what I really wanted to do and what my heart was set to do. And yeah, so it, it really, I'm sure it varies. It could, my one person may be set to do a person like the, day they go through the list another might take a week or two to like settle on one but yeah it can it really depends so how about you chloe was irena sandler just the natural choice or did you cycle through a lot of different um, unsung heroes before choosing her uh, well i did go through the whole list and i i think all of the names on that list have links towards like to the discovery award that corresponds with it I think and it has like a little summary or like something about the unsung hero like on a different on that link and so I read through all of those and I think I wrote down people that interested me and um I think and so then I wrote down my initial list and then I went back through and I was like read in more in depth and decided who I wanted and I think that quote just really turned me over the edge for her. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Chloe. And Eve. Um, so we're uh, coming up on 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, there are a few questions, mostly for educators and for people who work for LMC. Um, and one really, a uh, specific question that we won't have, we don't have on our FAQ that I think is um, important and pertinent is someone asked if there's, uh, if anyone has worked with special education students uh, who might struggle with the written part or cognitive part of this subject, how would, how would these students um, be able to get involved if anyone has worked with those? With that. No, I did see in the chat that it was it Lana that responded to um, a request. Are you still here? Oh, great, Lana. I know that you wrote in the chat addressing this question. Um, would you be able to speak briefly about that answer that you provided? Um, yeah, hi. Um, so um, I actually am I'm doing it right now. Um, I have a couple of kids with IEPs um, for that reason, executive functioning, that sort of thing. Um, but really, um, assistive technology, so I have the kids um, kind of uh, voice to text, speech to text, so as they're like reading or they have ideas, they're just kind of just talking into their phones, um, and so it's just writing it out for them, so it's reducing that amount of time from having to see it to, to transfer, so the transference uh, uh, aspect, but also um, uh, so two things. One, I have kids in um, with special needs, uh, like that that sort of thing, cognitively, but they have iPads, and so they've been drawing on the iPads, like like sketches, and that's kind of how they've been designing. So it there's that element um, there. Um, there's a lot of apps for assistive technology that I'm happy to share um, that are terrific from um, from like checking uh, your grammar to. Uh, that sort of thing. But honestly, the easiest thing is the cell phone. If you go to the notes app and you click on the, and, the, and then you can go to camera, um, it will scan anything for you. So I, that's like for um, titles of books, anything like that, like instead of having to write it, it's just scanning everything for them and then they can transfer it. So it's really easy and almost everybody has a, some sort of Android or Apple phone that works. So that's what I've been using. 
Thank you. That's so helpful. But I think that it's so important to know that any person that's in grades six through 12, that's interested in this competition, um, we want to be able to participate. And thank you for making sure that that's the case. I also got a question directly about relief paintings and whether that was a category that's accepted into the competition. And I responded directly to um, the individual, but I also wanted to say that for the record that relief paintings or that style is ex as an, an acceptable medium for the competition. Michael, do we have any other questions in the from educators? Uh for educators, um, there or directed is one. to us. Yeah, us yeah. Too. We have one more for educators. Great. Um, of what is what is your experience with students' receptions to the Unsung Hero lesson plan? Um, across the spectrum, I suppose. If any, if, if Laura or maybe Cheryl want to talk. Yeah, sure. Um, so. I am uh, a really, really lucky teacher in that I work in a really lovely place and my kids are, um, you know, I, as I said, I teach all the upper level courses. So my kids are pretty serious about everything they do at school and they, you know, some of them are taking art as their sort of like easy class um, with all of their APs and whatnot, um, but they all almost as a rule have really enjoyed it and I'm always kind of mesmerized to read their impact papers because it's it's made a difference they they've you know taken it on and, and really thought about it um and taken it seriously uh and not just you know gone through the motions of you know creating an illustration, if you will. Um, it's 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 more meaningful to them and they've uh, generally enjoyed it. Um, I think for my experience, the hardest part is usually getting them to um, pick someone. Not that it takes them forever, but they just start, they kind of spiral out on, on who to pick and why to pick. And there's always somebody who's like on it I know exactly who it is, but um, others who who um, maybe overthink it <laughs> a little bit, um, and and that's really their hardest part. But once they get into it, they really usually enjoy it a lot. Thank you so much for sharing that, Laura. We might have um, some questions that um, we are not able to get to because we're coming to the end of the Zoom here. And so I did want to just leave um, about a minute to, um, first of all, I did want to introduce our executive director of the Low Milken Center for Unsung Heroes to um, kind of say a concluding remark really briefly. Norm, do you want to say hello to everyone? Yes, hello, everyone. This is a wonderful competition. And I, as I look at some of these names, I see a lot of our fellows here, but uh, this competition just promotes quality in art and achievement among young people across this country. And so we are so appreciative of that. And I have Karen's name on here, so we'll go to her next. Uh, but thank you for being on this wonderful. Tony and Sarah, great job, Michael. Um, we appreciate it. And we're looking forward to some fantastic works of art coming in over the next several months. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to share my screen really briefly. And um, this should have the information about um, if anyone has additional questions that they haven't been able to get a response about within this brief Zoom, then I wanted to be able to provide um, these contact um, email addresses. This is for general questions, info at lowellmilkincenter.org. And then questions directed to um, Tony Goyamo, specifically about anything um, related to the NAEA conference that's coming up this April in San Antonio. We would love to hear if you're going to be at that event and um, to, uh, to talk to you and invite you to um, a special event that we're planning. 
So um, with that, I did also want to just leave um, a brief space to um, uh, let Karen um, jump in as Norm was going to do right before I interrupted him to say goodbye to everyone. And then um, we can uh, move on with our evenings. Karen, do you want to say uh, something briefly? I just wanted to thank you and Tony and Michael for putting this together. Um, and I'm just so looking forward to seeing these submissions come in um, and having another wonderful year of the artifact. Um, if anyone has any questions, please reach out through the information at lowmilkincenter.org. Um, and we will be happy to answer those questions as you start the process of putting together these projects. Couldn't agree more. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, it's been really a pleasure to have so many people join us this evening. And also a huge thank you to our special guests, to Laura, to Cheryl, to Eve, and to Chloe for being with us this evening. Um, and uh, I did also see in the chat that we do have some folks that might be able to connect in San Antonio. So we're really thrilled about that. And don't hesitate to get in touch with us about any questions you might have. And with that, I think that we are all set for tonight. Thank you so much, everyone.